afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Third Degree Burn for Friday, January 10th. I wanted to do a next day uh, reaction thought process uh, evaluation of the draft picks from yesterday. Um, first, let me say that uh, it's very clear that the draft is losing value, decreasing in value over the years. Uh, it's no longer worth anywhere near what it used to be. And, and Lucci even talked about that yesterday on the media conference call after the draft. Um, you know, 15 years ago, uh, first round picks were expected to be starters. If you missed on your first round pick, then you were in trouble because that was a player that should come in and start for your team right away. That was how you built your teams to a great extent. Uh, aside from foreign signings is you had to hit on the draft. You had to hit on college players. You had to get your first round guy, right. And probably even your second round guy, right. Um, those guys were expected to start uh, some at some point pretty quickly. And that's no longer the case. Um, there was an analogy made in the, on the draft broadcast about how the draft used to be like the NBA or the NFL where those guys were going to start. And now it's more like major league baseball where you're, you're drafting for gyms, you're drafting for guys to develop, you're drafting for guys that might be something down the line. I think that's a fair analogy. So, um, you know, keep in mind that caveat that these guys are projects, they're players that might pay off in the long run. Uh, that's certainly the way the team looks at them and that's the way we should look at them. So within that context, let's talk about the picks. All right, at 14, uh, Nikosi Burgess was the pick. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing his first name right, Nikosi. Um, this is a WAC Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, I did notice that it was the highest that a WAC player has been drafted since 1999. Um, this is a very raw player. Now, if you watch the, the video on him, the clips of him, he does have nice feet for a center back, and certainly for a guy of his size. He does pass pretty well from the back. He definitely has size and power. Um, you know, uh, there's, some, there's some polish there to his technical game to his individual game um what he's missing is um uh tactical play understanding of play how to fit into a team particularly at a pro level um he hasn't always been highly valued uh on the teams he's been on but um clearly fc dallas uh saw a huge potential here a huge diamond in the rough kind of potential um because they drafted this guy way above where he was ranked by most people um you know based on the draft boards i looked at he Probably could have been available where FC Dallas picked in the second round at 40th. So, obviously, though, FC Dallas values him. So, perhaps there's a criticism of reaching for him. But you also should give them some credit, I think, based on their recent track record of when they really like a guy, they go get him. And and there's something we have said about really liking a guy. So, um, FC Dallas did need a center back. Some of the best center backs had already gone off the board by the time they picked so they could have let him slide a little bit probably, but why not get the guy that you covet, uh, the guy that has potential? Now, there's some rawness. You're not going to see him a lot. I don't think this rookie year uh, with FC Dallas, I imagine he'll play a lot for North Texas, so that's fine. Um, but I do think there's a good chance he actually makes the FC Dallas roster rather than the North Texas roster, and then they loan him down. Um, despite this, uh, the, the fact he won't play right away, uh, I think they're going to want to have him in MLS training a bunch and then go down to the to the North Texas to play. So, interesting player. Big, powerful, strong. Big, big upside. Probably high-risk, high-reward kind of pick. All right, let's move on to Cal Jennings, who is the player that I really wanted them to draft uh, as I saw him following down the board. I mean, that going into the draft, he and... Um, uh, Garrett McLaughlin from uh, SMU were the two guys that I thought if one of those falls to SM to FC Dallas at 14, that would be amazing. Uh, and uh, McLaughlin went off the board quick, but uh, Jennings fell a little bit. And when he was available at 14, I was jumping up and down in glee, metaphorically speaking, that he was available. And I thought, oh, this is perfect. FC Dallas is going to draft him. And they didn't. <laughs> they let him go, and I was crying internally. And uh, But then, sure enough, here he was available with the second pick uh, they had, which is the 17th pick. So... Uh, let's talk about Jennings. It's not the fact that he was the NCAA leading scorer this year that attracted my attention. That certainly is nice. Uh, 18 goals in 20 games this year. And last year he had, uh, I think it was 14 goals in 15 games. So that's two prolific seasons of basically a goal a game. That's a really outstanding track record of college scoring. Of course, does college scoring translate to the pros? No. What I really liked about Jennings was um, when I saw him in person, he lit up that SMU game. Now he didn't score. Uh, no, he did score. Yes. Uh, but it wasn't that it was when I, when I try and watch a player for the first time and I knew about him coming in, I try and 
let the player speak to me, if you will. Instead of trying to an, uh, analyze his individual components, I just let the player uh, sort of affect me and like broadcast, if you will, what he has to me and see how I react. Um, and he lit up that game uh, in, the, in the sense that like he jumped out of that game, stood above that game, and was clearly a special player. Now, now so was Eddie Winjoma, but that's a homegrown guy that Dallas is after. This is a guy that was draftable. And when I watched him play, I thought, well, this is exactly why people say he's going to be a first round pick. You can see it. He's got something special above this game, clearly above this game. Uh, so that was super exciting to me. Um, that the, And it's not just that he's fast or just that he scored or just that he can drill why people. It's like it's the combination of those things. It was the reading of the game. It was the movement. It was the anticipation. It's the fact that his movement always put the defense center backs under stress and SMU has two, two good center backs too. It's not like they're bad players. Uh, he's just a guy that affects the game and affecting the game is big for me. It's huge for me. Now he does play as a nine. That's his best game is in the box goal poacher. Uh, he has that in common with Cobra. Once Cobra got it going anyway, that's his best game is to be in the box is to finish goals. Um, now he does have the ability to run people and dribble at people too. So in a hypothetical world, you could use him as a wing. He does have the pace for that. He does like to make runs and get behind people. So there is some versatility there. Again, Lucci loves the versatility. But um, for right now, his best game is that pure traditional nine understudy for Cobra. Pepe has the same style too, which is fine. This guy's obviously older and more mature than Pepe all about six years. So, uh, you know, he's a guy that I think actually you'll, we'll see, you'll see make some impact uh, with FC Dallas this year. Now, I don't think he's going to start any games. You know, and if Cobra was missing, I'm sure Jesus would start. But, um, you know, you're going to see Jennings make some benches, I think, as the season goes on and maybe get into some games. Um, you know, I, there have been some great scores that have come out of college in the United States. So, Wondolowski, we go way back to McBride. You got Twelman. You know, there's not always great college scores translate, but it does happen. So, you, you hope the intangibles this kid has can be that. But like everybody else, uh, this guy too, we'll have to see. It'll be a work in progress. He'll probably play a bunch from North Texas some too, at least early on in the season as he gets his feet underneath him. But uh, I'm really excited for this player. This is one of the guys that I really wanted out of this draft, and I'm really glad FC Dallas grabbed him because he is an electric player, or he has been in college, and we'll see if it translates. He does work hard. He does have a little bit of Paxton Pomichol's tenacity and effort and don't never say die sort of attitude, which I like. So the first two picks, I think, are both going to make the FC Dallas roster. The third pick, uh, Manuel Ferroli. I'm going to guess that's how you say that. Um, is a playmaking uh, midfielder. Now, this guy, uh, when you get to the, just in, in roster numbers, this kid probably is going to have to play for North Texas on a contract. It's the chances he can make the actual FC Dallas roster are thin, just on a number standpoint. It's nothing to do with him. It just has to do with how full the roster already is, depending on any sales that happen or how many loans happen. Maybe there's some opportunity for him, but it's almost assured in my thinking that he's going to have to be a North Texas player if he will take that kind of contract. Um, at James Madison, he played as a 10, a pure 10, but, um, earlier in his career, he played as an eight and a six, uh, and Lucci said at the combine, I don't remember if it's actually called the combine anymore, the scouting combine event they did at the, at the final, at the college final four, um, that this kid had to play as a six. Um, and while he doesn't really necessarily have the tackling of a six, he does have some nice deep position link passing and play back there, um, you know, dictating pace and holding the game. So for, for Lucci, that probably means he's more of an eight. So you might see him slot into North Texas' uh, roster there as an eight, maybe as a 10. Um, hypothetically, he could play as a 7-11, which is the wide wings. Uh, but it would be sort of as a false wing, kind of stylistic like Mauro Diaz did or Orangis did when they played them as wings. Um, so that's his game, is that uh, probably probably similar, similar in style to uh, a Thomas Roberts or a Brandon Cervania in terms of his game. Now, you know, again, how much upside is there on this kid? Uh, I don't know. He, he, he is the ECAC um, player of the year, offensive player of the year. Uh, you know, in 60 games, he did score 30 goals and had 10 assists. So, you know, there is something there. Um, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if it is enough to race to the level of Major League Soccer. It may not be. Well, again, you're drafting guys that are um, hypothetical potentials that maybe you're going to turn into something. So they're, they're going to take some development. And, and that's the big picture. That's what's to take away is remember Lucci is a teacher. He's a, a talent developer. This is why they hired him because he fits 
what they want to do. He fits their style uh, the, of the franchise of what they want to have people um, progress and go from North Texas to FC Dallas. This is what the, the the plan. You know, this is what Lucci does. So these picks all fit that profile, fit that idea of can they become something? Can we develop them? Can we progress them? And, and that's what these picks are for. So um, there's your sum up thoughts on the three players and where the whole draft breaks out. Um, n- not a lot of superstars in here, but uh, some potential, some exciting players, uh, some rough players. Uh, and we'll see what the FC Dallas can do with them. We'll see how it goes. All right, that's today's Third Degree Burn. Hope you enjoyed this dive into the draft picks, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Thank <laughs> you.